Wednesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, I will be talking about the remnants of severe weather across the southeast today and mountain snowfall across the Pacific Northwest going in through the next few days into the weekend. And also the polar vortex makes a return across the northwestern and northern United States and much of Canada as we get into the first and second weeks of December. If you guys are new to the channel and have yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button down below. It's free to do and you get all of my weather content. I cover North America, the Canada, the United States, and the tropics here on this channel. So hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates here on this channel. So looking here, we had a busy day yesterday uh, with the Storm Prediction Center uh, calculating here 74 total reports down below, 21 of those being tornado reports, 26 of those wind reports, and 27 hail reports, mainly centered across Mississippi, where a a lot of those tornado reports have been confirmed. Again, this list of tornadoes were 21, but then this could be, you know, increasing or decreasing in the coming days. We'll have to wait and see how that pans out. But yes, a very active day it was yesterday across portions of Mississippi, northern Louisiana, southeastern Arkansas, and really even up into central Kentucky with some of those hail reports as well, crossing into places like Alabama. That whole storm system is pushing off to the east. We got a cold front moving its way eastward here across the eastern seaboard from New England all the way south toward Florida here, bringing more severe weather later on today. The Storm Prediction Center has increased the probabilities to a slight risk, a level 2 of 5 here on the scale of 0 to 5 across southeastern portions of Alabama, the northwest Florida Panhandle, and southwestern Georgia with a marginal risk in the dark green surrounding that. So looking at the hazards today, we could have a 2% shading there of tornadoes. A brief spin-up tornado or two is possible across portions of northwest Florida, southwest Western Georgia into southern and southeastern um, Alabama as we head into the morning hours, especially and getting into the early afternoon. Also, a little bit higher chance of some damaging winds that could be in excess of 60 miles per hour across, especially southwestern Georgia, getting into far southeastern Alabama and northwest Florida with a 15% shading there in the yellow shaded colors and less than a 5% chance here of a large hail across much of the country here, especially the southeast in those areas, as the instability levels will be a lot lower as we get into the afternoon hours today. So again, tracking this line of storms, a squall line of showers and storms will be moving through much of the uh, Carolinas, especially into Georgia and the southeastern Alabama, northwest Florida panhandle as we go through the morning hours, bringing that heavy rain, the frequent lightning, and again, those severe weather hazards, a brief spin-up tornado, damaging winds that could be in excess of 60 miles per hour, and that large hail potential is also there, but much lower. And then that will start to swing its way off the coast here and enter portions of central Florida with maybe some remnant showers and storms there as we head into later on this afternoon, otherwise not seeing too much. Looking here at the rainfall amounts, not seeing much in the way of some uh, too much more heavy rainfall. Again, in the blue shaded colors, we could see anywhere from a half an inch to three quarters of an inch in some of those pink shaded colors, locally up to two inches, especially into central and northern Georgia as the system continues to move through. That's why we have a marginal risk for excessive rainfall here from the Weather Prediction Center across mainly southwestern Georgia, southeastern portions of Alabama and northwest Florida here as we go into today. Not expecting too much of a big deal in the way of flash flooding, but we'll continue to watch that. But behind this system is a lot of cold air. We have that powerful cold front swinging through from west to east, and you can see high temperatures this afternoon in the teens and 20s across the Dakotas, much of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and even getting as far south as Iowa, northern Illinois, and western Michigan as well, and much of the Pacific Northwest seeing that cooler air as well as we get to this afternoon. But as we go into tonight here to end the the uh end of November, we're going to see some very cold temperatures. Look at that below zero low, uh, day or daytime lows um, across port, nighttime lows rather across portions of Montana, getting down into the Rockies and portions of the Dakotas there. And then even some uh, teens for highs or uh, for lows rather, sorry, um, into portions there of the Texas panhandle. And then again, twenties for lows across portions there of the Chicago lakefront, getting up into green Bay, Milwaukee, and then uh, some forties being found over there in Detroit. Detroit. Looking across the Pacific Northwest, a lot of
of hazards up there. We got a lot of pink shaded colors and purple shaded colors. Those are winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings. That's where we could expect some of that upper elevation snow that extends down into the north central California as well. And the reason for that is because we have a strong trough starting to dig in again to the Pacific Northwest here this afternoon. That will continue in a big way as we head into your Thursday to open the month of December. And that will be bringing that snowfall across these areas through the rest of this morning into this afternoon here. You can see these blue shaded colors. That's the snowfall that'll be flying here, especially in those higher elevations. That will continue into the evening and overnight hours and really through the better half of your Thursday out there on December 1st into places like Western Montana, much of Idaho getting back into the Pacific Northwest here into Washington State, Oregon State and those upper elevations there of Northern California. And that even continues as we get into early this weekend on Saturday, December 3rd, waking up here on your Saturday, still some more snow to be had across portions of Southern British Columbia, Canada, and getting down especially into Washington State with kind of a atmospheric river of rainfall here with a strong spiraling low pressure system across portions of Western Oregon as we head into the afternoon on your Saturday. Snowfall accumulations are going to be pretty robust across this area. We could be seeing some double-digit snowfall, especially across uh, Washington State, getting into Oregon State, especially in those higher elevations. That will extend northward into British Columbia, Canada, and to southwestern Alberta, Canada there in those Canadian provinces. We could be talking about snowfall amounts up to two feet, potentially, in those higher elevations there in Washington State and Oregon State, and some pretty healthy snowfall along the Sierra Nevadas as well into California with some maybe 12 to 18 inches of snow or higher there. So that will be some good news to kind of refill the reservoir of that moisture across those areas. But then the attention turns towards early December, the first and second week in December, the Climate Prediction Center's forecast does call for likely below normal temperatures that will take us through much of December, especially that first full week in December, going all the way through Friday, December 9th. You can see the darkest shade of blue is actually up here into the Dakotas, getting into northern Minnesota, back into Montana, and then extending back into California and much of the Pacific Northwest. That's where we'll see the cooler temperatures, but to the south and east, we're going to see the, some of these ridges start to um, emerge with the, the warmer side of these storm systems across the immediate Gulf Coast and much of the Tennessee Sea Valley in the southeast. That's where you see the oranges and red shaded colors for those above normal temperatures. And it does have some staying power with the cold air across the northern plains and upper Midwest going all the way through Tuesday, December 13th. We could be seeing some very cold daytime highs, some very cold nighttime lows across these areas, especially in the Pacific Northwest, the northern plains, and upper Midwest as well. And that will extend northward into much of Canada with that polar vortex kind of staying stationed across southern Canada during that time frame. So let's kind of look at this and show you what we could expect uh, with this polar vortex and uh, again this is going to be a kind of a multiple lobes of the polar vortex will kind of break off and separate themselves uh, starting here on Sunday December 4th this upcoming weekend we got one of those lobes of uh, uh, low pressure and that you know stronger area of colder weather will be across portions of Ontario and Quebec Canada that will rotate down to the United States we'll have another lobe of low pressure start to dig down across the United States here in the northern plains and upper Midwest going into early the following week on Tuesday, December 6th. And that even continues as we have um, another low pressure system digging in and a trough across the Pacific Northwest and Southwestern Canada going into Friday, December 9th. So multiple times we'll be seeing this polar vortex kind of break itself off. Here are a couple different pieces of the polar vortex breaking down um, and breaking off into the you know southern Canadian provinces and getting into the northern and northwestern United States as we get into the first full week in December and then extending into the second week in December as well. So looking at those temperatures on the surface, you can see as we get into Sunday, December 4th, these are your afternoon high temperatures. You can see teens and 20s across much of the northern plains, below zero temperatures for highs across much of Manitoba, getting into portions of northern Ontario, getting into Quebec, Canada as well. That will move itself a little farther south as we get into the following week on Tuesday, December 6th. These are daytime highs, possibly below zero or right around zero across northern Minnesota, much of North Dakota. And again, a lot of southern Canada is going to be below zero. So minus 10 to minus 20 degree highs across those areas going into Tuesday, December 6th. And then that will pull itself north and eastward again, but another low pressure system and trough will dig down across the Pacific Northwest, bringing probably some more mountain snow with all this cold air, especially in those upper elevations, as we have those colder daytime highs across those areas areas and especially across New England as well 
into portions here of Maine, getting back into Vermont, New Hampshire, and no upstate New York, and getting into southeastern Canada. A lot of these daytime highs will be into the single digits, the teens, and even below zero. So that will be a very cold air mass as we finish off next week here on Friday, December 9th. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely appreciate it. If you like this video here, definitely leave a like down below by giving it a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those later on today. And most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for all the new subscribers out there. I definitely appreciate it. Hit that notification bell to get all of my weather forecast updates on this channel. I'll be coming out with a new update tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning for you guys on my December uh, outlook here for what I expect for a December weather wise as we head into the day tomorrow. So look forward to that and I hope you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday and I'll see you all in the next video.